Throughout the Second World War, the Imperial Japanese Army took the unconventional step of constructing and operating its own aircraft carrier, independent from the Navy. This was particularly notable because the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy were known for their strained relations during the conflict, a complexity that warrants an in-depth exploration to fully understand their often dysfunctional dynamic. In the period before the Second World War, Japan's leadership fell under the sway of militarists who championed a policy of aggressive territorial expansion to establish a Japan-centric co-prosperity sphere across Asia. Despite sharing a common goal, the Imperial Army and Navy were at odds over the strategic approach to Japan's imperialist ambitions. The Army proposed a bold advance through China into Russia to secure Siberia's vast mineral wealth positioning itself as the lead force in a predominantly land-based campaign. Conversely, the Navy advocated for expansion into Southeast Asia and towards Australia, aiming to capture vital oil and rubber resources in Indochina and the East Indies, a strategy that would highlight its maritime dominance. This strategic divide led both military branches to independently prepare for the conflicts they preferred viewing each other as competitors for resources and recognition. Throughout the war, this rivalry manifested in actions such as the Navy recruiting its own infantry units and in battle zones like New Guinea and Iwo Jima, where both forces were present, operating with entirely separate command structures. In an extraordinary move, the Army even ventured into naval territory by building and managing its own aircraft carriers. By late 1939, Japan resolved to take control of the resource-rich regions of the Dutch East Indies, French Indochina, and British territories in Singapore and Malaysia. This ambition necessitated significant amphibious operations by the Japanese army, leading to the development and deployment of a novel vessel type, the Assault Ship. These ships were designed to transport and launch around 25 Daihatsu-class landing crafts, facilitating the delivery of troops directly to the battlefield shores. To secure air support for their invasions, given their distrust in the Imperial Navy's cooperation, Japanese Army generals opted to develop their own fleet of aircraft carriers. In 1941, they took over two civilian cruise liners each approximately 12,000 tons and in early stages of construction, repurposing them for warfare. These ships were designed to house 27 Daihatsu landing crafts within their structure, launching them via a hull door, and were equipped with a continuous flat flight deck and a hangar with an elevator system. Named Akitsu Maru and Nijitsu Maru, these vessels were distinctly under army command, not the navies, manned by civilian crews but with army personnel serving as aircrew and manning the anti-aircraft guns. Spanning 471 feet, each of these assault carriers could accommodate eight combat-ready aircraft or 20 planes in a transport capacity, tied down for delivery. The initial absence of arresting gear, though deck wires were added subsequently, meant standard army aircraft like the Hayabusa Oscar could launch but not return to the deck. Consequently, Kokusai Ki-76 utility aircraft, typically used for reconnaissance and officer transport, were adapted for combat roles with the inclusion of machine guns and bombs for assaults on beachfront targets due to their compact size and slow landing requirements. Despite their innovative design, the carrier's operational life was short-lived. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, U.S. submarines intensified their assault on Japanese maritime operations. In the final two years of conflict, American submarine forces decimated 4.9 million tons of Japanese vessels, capturing or destroying 1,178 merchant ships and 214 naval vessels, including eight carriers, a battleship, and 11 heavy cruisers, accounting for roughly 60% of Japan's total maritime losses. By 1944, Japan faced a net loss in maritime capacity, losing ships at double the rate of new constructions. 
That same year, both Akitsu Maru and Nigitsu Maru met their demise at the hands of American submarines. In response to the critical menace presented by U.S. submarines against their troop carriers, the Japanese Army sought a solution in the form of diminutive aircraft carriers designated for anti-submarine warfare. Seizing three under-construction Type II Terra Leaders tankers, the Army equipped them with a 350-foot flight deck. These carriers lacked a hangar, leaving their complement of eight Kai-76 aircraft exposed on the deck. Of these, only the Yamashio Maru was completed and operational before the war's conclusion, entering service in January 1945, only to be destroyed by a submarine within weeks. The Kumano Maru, constructed atop a conventional cargo ship framework and launched in March 1945, was another hasty endeavor. Its flight deck spanned 360 feet without the capacity for arresting gear, rendering it somewhat underprepared for operational demands. The Kumano Maru's military career was non-existent, and following Japan's capitulation, it was stripped of its flight deck and relegated to a mundane cargo vessel role until its dismantlement in 1948. A groundbreaking advancement in the Japanese Army's carrier fleet was the adoption of the first combat helicopters. The United States' explorations into helicopter technology during the 1930s piqued Japan's interest. By 1939, the Imperial Army had acquired a Kellett KD-1A autogyro, an early helicopter model that crashed soon after, but laid the groundwork for Japan's own version. This led to the development and production of the Kayaba Ka-1 Autogyro in May 1941, marking a significant venture into rotary wing aircraft. These autogyros were deployed to the Philippines, providing critical artillery spotting capabilities. As the American submarine offensive severely impacted Japanese maritime operations, the Army recognized the potential of deploying K-1 autogyros and their larger successors, the K-2, on their compact aircraft carriers. These aircraft, outfitted with depth charges, were ideal for anti-submarine roles due to their capability for short takeoffs, which matched the small carrier's limited deck space. Consequently, the Kai-76 aircraft were phased out in favor of the K-1 and K-2 autogyros, transforming these Japanese army vessels into the pioneering helicopter carriers. Notably, the Akitsu Maru was equipped with eight K-2s at the time of its sinking. Throughout the war, approximately 100 autogyros were manufactured, though only around 30 saw operational deployment. The limited production and operational use meant that these innovative aircraft remained unknown to the American forces until Japan's capitulation. 